University of Notre Dame is also in the headlines, but for the wrong reasons this time. The NCAA has ordered the program to vacate all of its 2012 and 2013 football victories in academic misconduct case. So here's the deal. The Fighting Irish were the national runner-up in 2012. Losing in to Alabama in the championship game, Notre Dame is appealing the decision announced Tuesday by the NCAA Committee on Infractions. They found a former student trainer completed coursework for two student athletes and provided impermissible academic benefits to six others over a three-year period. Here's head coach Brian Kelly on the situation. When you hear about vacating wins, you think of lack of institutional control. You, you hear of... Um, you know, clearly uh, abuse within the university uh, relative to extra benefits, things of that nature. And these don't even come close to that. We still beat all those teams. So you can put an asterisk next to it. If that makes you feel better, um, then that's fine with me. Max? I'm with Coach. I, I, don't, I don't understand what's happening here. I really don't understand the, the ire toward mm -hmm. Kelly. Is his job in trouble? Is it Let's just go over what happened. There was student-to-student -student cheating, yep. which, by the way, happens at every university. It's not that it's not serious. Academic fraud is serious, but it happens all the time. It is discovered and self-reported. Wins are then vacated, which is also an absurd idea to me. I agree with Coach. Like Those wins happen. You're going to vacate them in fantasy land? Fine. Go ahead. It's stupid. It always has been. But wins are then vacated, which is supposed to dissuade the cheaters, but in fact, you would like to incentivize schools to self-report. You don't want to do things that will dissuade them, and maybe sanctioning them in this way would dissuade them. I don't think it's, it's good just in terms of incentive to do the right thing. But at any rate, because of that, the coach should somehow be ashamed or in hot water. Now, if, if, if people infer from what happened that they were aiding and abetting and the mm -hmm. fact that it was a student trainer, it was somehow a lack of institutional control or worse, uh, um, authority figures in the institution making that available to other students, fine, then make that case. But if it's simply, hey, the school self-reported and we're saying bad school and bad coach, that doesn't make sense to me. It seems to me this was handled properly. You know, we go back and forth, and obviously, you know, usually a show like this is predicated on two dissenting opinions. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's nothing wrong with agreeing sometimes, particularly in a situation like this where there are principled positions involved. I have no problem whatsoever with Brian Kelly's position. I completely agree with him, and I agree with what Max had to say. But I'm going to take it a step further, Max, and I need to say this because I think it's important. Mm -hmm. I am getting sick and tired of coaches being held accountable for things that young men decide to do. Are they grown? No. Do they have mortgages and stuff like that? No, we get that. But the flip side is they're not toddlers. They're not children. Yep. If you cheat on a test, you know good and damn well it was you. What the hell does that have to do with a coach? It has nothing to That's do with fair. a coach. It's not, it's, it's, it, it is not right and it is not fair to the Brian Kellys of the world because he's not the only coach that has had to stand up there and, and, and to some degree, you know, be held accountable for the transgressions of individuals who have decided to try and skirt around the rules. We've got here, what are we talking about here? A former student athletic trainer. We're talking about two football student athletes during a three-year period. You trying to tell me that a student, a student trainer or an athletic trainer might know a thing or two about a particular course or whatever. He decides to help two students and the coach is aware of that? That's nonsense. Stop it. The fact of the matter is we live in a society where we've got too many parents out there. And, 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 I'm, and, I'm, and when I say parents, I'm talking about people who may be on the NCAA committees, mm -hmm. people who may be in corporate America and beyond, people who are in positions of influence and power who happen to be parents that want to look at a coach and act like a coach is supposed to be the be-all, end-all. Like Max said, if the coach 
is somehow, you know, culpable because you can pinpoint how this coach was directly involved in somebody trying to skirt the rules to benefit his program. That's entirely different. Pay for play, you know, manipulating or, or, or you know, using your muscle and cachet to force administrative officials to do what you want to do to keep a player eligible. That's entirely different. But if you know that a couple of guys decided that they wanted to try and cheat, all right, they wanted to cheat, and you find out about it, how in God's name with a straight face can you hold the coach accountable for that? That, to me, is letting off an 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old off the hook. And last time I checked, we sending kids to jail for not knowing how to act when they're 16. Look, so how the hell are you 19, 20, 21 years of old in college and you don't know any better? Of course you know better. Brian Kelly's absolutely right. This is nonsense. Look, it's nonsense. I think part of what's going on mm -hmm. is he has an Kelly has an abrasive personality, or, or reportedly. Yep. Some people just don't. We know he rubs, him, we know, we he, he, he rubs him them the wrong yep. way. So when you have that kind of personality and there's a little weakness there, you're having a bad season, for example, yep. people will pile on. I just would rem they're four and seven right now, no bowl game. That's, that's right. over. Um, I'll just remind people they were ten and three last that's year. That's right. They made it to the national title game in 2012 they and went lost. to the Fiesta Bowl after that. They got crushed, by right. the way, by Alabama. Yeah, Alabama crushes a lot of Destroyed. teams. <laughs> Destroyed. But the point yeah. is, and they, so they finished fourth that year. But in reality, they finished second. If, I'm sorry, if you get to the national title game and you lose, you're the, you finish in second place. The last time they were the second best team in the country was 1993. So for Notre Dame boosters, alumni, fans. Mm -hmm. If you think now's the time because there's a weakness that you, that you don't like Brian Kelly and you think you, there's a way to come, somehow get him out, be sure that's what you want to do. Because right now they're having one bad season. They've had a lot of success recently. 10-3 and three last year, Fiesta Bowl. Lost. Mm -hmm. Two years before, the, the, the two previous years, 8-5 and five and 9-4, and four, Music City and Pinstripe Bowl. Uh, Brian Kelly inherited the program from Charlie Weiss. By all accounts, he's done a decent job, not sensational job. Only had one really sensational year. The year they went 12 and one and went to the national championship game. Other than that, it's been eight and five seasons, along with 10 and three seasons from last year. And this year, they've nosedived. We get it. But if you don't want the man to be the head coach of your football program, you've got ammunition in, re in regards to football. Don't use this to try to smear him and use it as an excuse to try and sully his name. He has nothing to do with this. I am sick and tired of folks out there looking for other people to parent their kids, trying to blame him for what transgressions may have taken place. He is a football coach. You can't possibly watch every single little thing a guy does with your football program. There's over 80 guys on your roster. I I'm sorry. Sometimes they're going to cheat. They're going to act up. It's what you do when you find out that they have right. transgressed. Yes. It's That's not the about point. them yep. transgressing. That's the point. That's you what it is. You have to ask Preach. yourself if you're the NCAA. What kind of atmosphere do we want? Do we want an atmosphere that's conducive to transparency and honesty? Or do we want one that, that, that does not incentivize people to do the right thing, that does the opposite? And by vacating wins and by, by taking very drastic measures, they're creating the wrong kind of atmosphere. That's the wrong reaction to have to the school that's trying to do the right thing, it seems to me. Well, first of all, I think it's the height of hypocrisy for a, 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 an institution like the NCAA, you know, to, to, to talk about transparency. Well, I mean, when the hell are they going to be transparent? Who actually makes these decisions? Who are the committee members that come to these conclusions? Who are they? Where do they live? Well, okay, where are their that. offices or whatever? We know it's in Indianapolis somewhere or whatever. But what do they do? I mean, what are their roles? These ad hoc committees that they come up with? Oh, please go someplace. It's ridiculous. Uh, Ryan Kelly yesterday basically told them to kick rocks, and I don't blame them. We're all on the I same page here. Redskins Cowboys a big rivalry. I already know. For 40 years or yeah. more. What do you know about it? I know nobody here like the Dallas Cowgirls. Mm, the rookie Kelly burst on the scene the last three weeks for Washington. Now keep in mind, week two against Washington, the nine-game win streak started, and this is the first time an NFL defense gets a second look at Dak Prescott. So great litmus test there. Like, love, or hate, that fat Rob Kelly said this. <sighs> Max Kellerman, I hated it. Oh, come on. I hated it. You know why? Because, first of all, when y'all lost to the Dallas Cowboys in week two on your home turf in the nation's capital, I might add, I mean, Landover, Maryland, we could be all technical about it if we want to. It's FedEx Field. I don't recall seeing 
Kelly play that game. I, I don't I recall it. I don't recall seeing him. Was he on the roster? I'm sure I don't know whether he was injured, whether he was benched, whether he was a second strike. I don't know what the situation was, but all I know is I didn't see that brother out on the football field. And so you're going to sit up there and run your mouth. And, I mean, let sleeping dogs lie. The Dallas Cowboys have won nine straight. They are rolling. Right now, you getting ready to go on to their turf for Thanksgiving Day. You got to stop them. You already got your coach and your team complaining about the short rest because you had a Sunday night game, and now you got to turn around and play on Thursday. And what are you going to do? You are going to open your mouth and call them the cowgirl shots fired. Now, don't get me wrong. I would love it if he backs it up. I would love it if the Redskins back it up. But make no mistake about it, Mr. Kelly is on the clock. He wanted to, he clearly wanted to eye the storm on him. You have our attention. You will be watched. And you it will be recorded what you do in this game. He had better show up and produce, and the Redskins had better back it up. Because if they don't, Listen, they're going to have a rough, rough, right, rough, 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 rough uh, afternoon. You don't talk smack like this. I kind of like it. And here's, and here's the deal. I'm very, very big on this. Individual sports, I have no problem. You're a boxer, you want to talk smack? Talk away. you UFC fighter? Talk away. you a tennis player? Talk away. you a golfer? Talk away. Do all of that. But when you got to rely on a whole bunch of teammates who may not have your swag, who may not have your ability, who may not have your tenacity, or, or you don't do that because it puts you in a position where you can end up making dudes have to live up to something Max they simply ain't capable of I living up to. I love this. I love this. First I'm with of all, you. First of all, Kelly, if you play Daily Fantasy, mm -hmm. boy, you could get I him. I don't. You could get him for yeah. pennies on the dollar, mm -hmm. and he's producing like the best guy in the league. This is an undrafted rookie who has been balling recently, mm -hmm. a big part of their recent role in Washington. And you're playing the Dallas Cowboys, not only America's team, but arguably the best team in football right now. Certainly uh, in the NFC, they look like the best team. They have the best point differential in the game. They're the best team, or excuse me, third against the run. That's elite. I know they play ball control offense. It helps their defense. Whatever. Third in yards per game against the run. Third. That's an elite defense against the run. And you're the running back calling them out. How much better does it get than that? An NFC East rivalry game? The first place Cowboys you're going up against? An excellent run defense? You're undrafted? <laughs> and you're talking like this? I love this? it. How could you not love, how could you of all people not love this? Because once again, I'm concerned about the Redskins in this game, A. B, it's not just about his ability, it's about that of his team. C, this dude had 17 carries. 17 carries until three games ago. Now, over the last three games, he had 21, He's a 22. Rookie. And 20. Give him that's a what, break. That's why you don't need to be. You listen, your breath smells like Similac. You wet behind the ears. Mind your damn manners. You haven't done anything yet. Yeah, you had a big game against Green Bay last week, but that's Green Bay, which we all know is just a, a, just a joke of a defense right now. Pride, that was his first 100 yard game of his career 137 yards on 24 carries. So when you look at that, okay, the fact of the matter is he hasn't really shown enough yet to be opening his that's mouth. That's why he doesn't but care, Stephen listen, A. When listen, you go undrafted and you work your way fine, to this position, what do you have to listen, lose? Listen, I'm not saying, well, well, wait a minute. He has a lot to lose because if he doesn't show up Thursday and they play like garbage, excuse me, a lot of people are going to remember the fact that he said, this, you're a rookie, but you're a rookie. Mind your manners. Mind your manners. Now, you know, now let, let me give you the flip side sure. of that. Let's say after talking this smack <clears throat> against Dallas, which you just met, mentioned, third in the league against the run, he then goes out and balls. What do you have to say about well, that? Well, then I'll be happy. You'll love oh. it. But I'm concerned that that's not going so to happen. So the outcome because, will affect what you think about no, no, him talking out, smack. Not just the outcome. The but fact the outcome. that he's willing hold to on, risk that makes it the awesome. The outcome of him and the outcome of his performance. Not just that of the Redskins, but of him. Redskins could win this game. But if you average in two yards a rush and you ain't doing anything, I'm going to remember the fact you that you opened your mouth. It. I don't like Let it. me tell you, well, yeah, sure, if he fails. But yeah. he, the whole point of him talking like this is he You're don't a plan rookie. on failing. You're a rookie. That makes it even more gangster. You're a what rookie. You I about? I reward. Let, let me tell you what else I like about it. In these kind of rivalries, mm -hmm. and Cowboys versus Washington, partly it's stupid just because of the names of the team is like this really hardcore football rivalry, NFC East and the whole thing. Part of the right kind of culture on a team is developing the proper hatred for the other team. So 
calling them the cowgirls, and uh, yes, it's not like uh, politically correct, obviously, to call to, to make to use girl in a pejorative sense. But no. getting the getting I've beyond said it before. that. Okay, fine. But getting beyond that, the idea is you're 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 dissing basically. Mm -hmm. You're just you're. He has something negative to say about them. All right. Indicates that you have internalized the rivalry. And if you're a Washington fan, you're looking at that going, I like the culture on this team. The rookie running back has already internalized the hatred of the Dallas Cowboys. And that kind of culture actually leads to success in rivalry games. It really does. Well, listen. I had the pleasure of interviewing Joe Theismann yesterday on my radio show. Joe Theismann, Super Bowl champion quarterback for the Washington Redskins. He was on my show, Sirius XM, Mad Dog Sports Radio, every weekday, 1 to 3 p.m. Channel 82. The time. Channel 82. Here's the deal. Joe Theismann loves the way the Redskins are playing. Of course, he believes the Redskins are going to win this game. Uh, he's saying that since, you know, since they started out 0-2, keep in mind that they're 6-1-1 over their last eight games, which is very, very impressive. We look at it from that perspective. So the Redskins clearly are a team uh, that, that has the capability to ball. They have a high-powered offense, uh, particularly when you look at Garcon, Deshaun Jackson, Jordan Reed, give Vernon Davis some love, backing up at that tight end spot. Looks like his career is getting rejuvenated. Offensive line doesn't look as suspect as it used to be. Kirk Cousins is balling and looking like a franchise caliber quarterback. We're not sold on that, but he's looking the part, at least right now, and give him his props because he's willing to set that one-year franchise tag. The fact of the matter is, with all of that being said, it minimizes the excuses to lose a game of this magnitude. And so, That's to me, like but, well, again, to they don't me, plan on losing. Well, 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 again, I don't understand that. But this is a rookie who is unproven saying this. This was Kirk Cousins. I would have loved it. If this was Deshaun Jackson or, or Pierre Garçon or Jordan Reed, I would have loved you it. You want someone but, more but, proven. But, 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 but uh, Kelly, you know, who I never knew about till two weeks ago. But that makes I me mean, like it more. Y'all like it more. That's fine. Because it's not going to hurt y'all as much if the Cowboys win. But it's going to hurt just, me. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't. I, wait, I wait a minute. The Cowboys are going to win. You guys will pick it tomorrow. The Cowboys are going to win. This is what it is. You, you caught this oh, the other day. No, no, You're worried. really afraid that he's giving the Cowboys too much motivation. That's what this is about. I am, I am concerned about mm. that. Listen, man, we have to come together as a nation and figure out a way to stop these Cowboys. We cannot have the That's Cowboys winning these games. We have to All come right. together. And anything that can impede the ability to knock off the Cowboys is a, is a concern to me. The man makes me. a good point. We must come up with Your something. We, cannot we, have to come, we have to come together as a nation to figure out how to stop these Cowboys. Us. All right, we got to move in. Yes or no answer here. Have you guys ever used that term, Cowgirls, to describe the Cowboys? Me? Have I? Oh, I've never no, no, no. seen you with a loss for words, for Max. This? I'm a Giants fan. I'm too busy this? watching Super okay, Bowl championships. Whatever. I'm not worried about the Cowboys. Yeah. I said it in private. Okay.